Hi, I'm Abu Bakr Siddiq Ango, Double Pi Evangelism Program Manager at GitLab. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you how to set up dynamic application security testing in GitLab. Now, oftentimes testing in CI, when your CI jobs are running, usually involves static application testing, just checking your code to check if the right syntax is used, certain errors or things, uh, and other things like that, just syntactic errors. What if you really want to test how your application behaves in environment where it's supposed to run? Or you have certain regulatory requirements like PCI DSS where certain we impute how applications are impute, how data is handled, how requests and responses are handled is very critical. That is where dynamic application security testing comes in. And in GitLab, you can set up different kind of DAST, that's dynamic application security testing. The first one is proxy-based DAST, which is basically used for websites that are not heavy on JavaScript. That may be probably a simple HTML. Then we, not, we also have a browser-based analyzer for DAST, which is used for applications that have heavy use of JavaScript. And the, for the uh, browser-based analyzer, it checks the application thoroughly, even executes clicks, executes inputs, executes differences, just to test how the application will respond and uh, how it will behave. We also have the API analyzer for Dust, which helps you to test your APIs and it supports different types of API uh, frameworks. For example, like the Swaga, I think Open API framework, Postman Collections, HTML Archive, and a couple of others that are used to build APIs. So you, in the GitLab documentation, I'll be adding it to the description. You can learn how to configure these different types of application. For the browser-based analyzer, you can even set up authentication. Maybe the page you want to be tested requires authentication. You can set up, oh, which page is authentication going to happen? Where, uh, what are the authentication details you should use? Which text boxes is for the username? Which one is for the password? And so you can set all of that up. And the spiders that are used by the analyzers to analyze the pages, we use that information to log in before they test the pages. Now, I'll be showing you how to set up Dust on GitLab. Uh, and we'll see a demo of how it works. Now, moving to my browser here, we have a project here already. Now, let me go back to my main project page. Then to set up Dust, you go to Secure and you go to Security Configuration. Now, on that Security Configuration, you have uh, information, uh, we have different security testing that you can set up. We have SAST, which is static application security testing, uh, infrastructure scanning, and so on. But our focus for today is Dust. Now, to enable Dust, you have to enable it from here or by enable Dust. And it, it works with profiles. The first one is scanner profile, and we have site profile. With scanner profiles, you configure how the spiders and scanners that analyze the website or your page or your application, how they behave. Should they behave active? Should they behave passive? And how should they run? Then the site profile is where you give more information about the page or the website or application that needs to be tested and information that is needed to authenticate with the application. You can also specify pages to exclude or pages to uh, include in the an analysis. Now let's see, we have an example of uh, a scanner profile that has been created here. So let's review it and see. Now this scanner profile says, okay, the name, you need to specify a name, critical dust. Now the first one, the first scanning mode here is active. It's going to really test and test your application, making requests, interacting with the application actively. Now, it is very important that you don't use this against production 
services that are running live that might impact users. This, you should test it before it gets to production, obviously. Now for passive, it's basically going to monitor HTTP requests and responses that are going between the application. Now, then uh, the spider that will be doing the analysis, what's the timeout? When should it stop? And target timeout. Um, so the maximum number of seconds allowed for the site owner to respond to a request. If you've sent a request to it and it doesn't reply on time, how long should you wait before uh, you stop? Then if you want to use Ajax Spider to run, uh, maybe we have some um, websites that are heavy on Ajax, you can enable this also. Now, once you are done, click Save. Then we have Site Profile. Inside profile here, you can then specify what kind of application are we testing? Is there an API? That is API where it will use the API analyzer or a normal website. Then where is the target URL? Now, one way for you to set up in this example here, I'm using my personal website to test because I can test against it. It's mine. I can't attack someone else's website. Now, if in a situation where you are testing your application, it's important to use something like review apps. That is where you've set up a testing environment that has a URL that you can test against. So any time you are deploying, you deploy to that test environment and the URL is specified in your site profile for that test to run against. So now you can also exclude URLs, parts within your website that you don't want it to scan. And you can add additional headers here that might be required for the scanning to happen. Now, if there's an authentication needed, you can enable authentication. What's the authentication URL? What's the username? What's the password? What's the field for the username? And what's the field for password? We already have default here. And what is the submit button? So that when the analyzer is analyzing the website, going through the website, it will look for, oh, that field for username and the field for password. And once it has entered the information into the value uh, elements of that, uh, those fields, it can execute a click on the submit button ID that you specified. So GitLab uses a browser uh, tool to do the analysis so that it can be able to test the website thoroughly. Now, but one thing that is also uh, that you need to take note of when it comes to uh, site profiles, you need to validate, especially if you want to use here, if you set your scanner profile to passive, you don't need to validate. You to run passive, just monitoring requests and uh, responses. But if you want to use active, you need to validate. Validation is important. You see, it will tell you you cannot run active scan against an unvalidated website. This is to ensure that you are only running this test against sites that you own. So you validate that by uh, adding a header to the website or adding uh, some form of validation to ensure that it is your website. We want to know that it's your website, it's your application. So I'm going to change this to passive for now. And you can then get the code to add to your CI file. So here we have uh, a, a sample CI file that we're going to use. So let me, you can either copy it to go add to your gitlab.yaml file, or you can copy and it should automatically open for us here. So let's replace this. And we can uh, yeah, let's update and then let's let's commit to master. So pipeline should run. and you see we have a job here, dust. 
and dust here will execute and we will see all the different analysis going to do the interactions it had with the uh, application and so on now the GitLab uses OWAP's uh, Z attack proxy to run all the tests it does with your website. And like I said, it is important to validate your website to ensure that you are not running this against other people's website, basically attacking them. And advisably, you don't do this against production system. You, sh you should have done your test within your the CI before it gets to production. Now, you can learn more about the different uh, ways to, uh, now it's done. We can see here all the tests it ran and some of the responses it got from the website. Let's scroll down. Uh, it said requesting access to this, starting scanning, spider starting to with target and it's doing a lot of uh, execution and scanning, script passive, scan rules pass, big redirect text, loosely scoped cookie, cookie not, no. See, it's running different tests, content type header missing, directory browsing, hash disclosure, private IP disclosure. A lot of tests are executed against the application. And we can see here that this website passed all, there was, there was no uh, vulnerability that was discovered. Now, you can learn more about dynamic application security testing and how you can implement it in the GitLab documentation. In the GitLab documentation, I'll be adding this link to the description of this video so you can view and learn more about how to set it up and the different types of configuration that you can specify. Now, um, so here we have the browser-based analyzer and proxy-based analyzer. The difference between browser-based analyzer and the proxy analyzer, how by default, only the proxy-based analyzer is used to test your website. But when you want to, maybe your website is heavy on JavaScript, you add a CI variable to your, uh, to your job this way to tell it that it should do a browser scan, which means, oh, I'm using heavily JavaScript. Please use the browser to scan the website instead of just monitoring the HTTP request going back and forth. Yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for listening.